For this lesson, we're going to be taking a look at the derivatives of logarithmic functions. In a previous lesson, we were looking at the derivatives on ex of exponential functions. So here's just a, a brief summary of what we've done so far. And from this, you can see that we started with the exponential function with the base as the natural number, which is e. And so we looked at the derivative of that. And we looked at the derivative when it was a little bit more complicated, where we had to use the chain rule. Then we move to the general exponential function where the base was not necessarily the natural number, it's any base b, and it changed the derivative a little bit. We had to incorporate the idea of this natural logarithm instead. So there was this multiplying constant in front, which was ln of b. And again, if we applied the chain rule to a more complicated example, we still had that new factor, that, that new multiplying factor, ln of b, but we had to include the chain rule derivative, which we would have to do any time the chain rule is involved. For this lesson, we are going to actually now take a look at logarithms in general, and that natural logarithm in particular, and look at the derivatives of those. So when we talk about logarithms, from the advanced functions course, we first looked at exponential functions and considered, well, what would it be or what kind of function would be formed if we looked at the inverse function from an exponential. And what, the way that we described this was known as the logarithmic function. You can see the base of the logarithmic function matches the base of the exponential function. So if we start with this function, then its inverse is the logarithm. In our previous lesson looking at the derivative of b to the x, we ended up at e to the x as a very special case of this. And so similarly, if this one has a base of e, then the inverse of this function, f inverse of x, is going to have a base of e. The base is going to be the same. When we have that base of e, that is actually so important in mathematics and in the natural sciences, the physical sciences, that it gets its own name called ln, the natural logarithm, which is pronounced ln l a W n. So this is the ln of x, the natural logarithm of x. In order to work with natural logarithms, you might want to refresh your memory on the laws of logarithms. So these are something we've covered in the advanced functions course. And the exact same laws of logarithms apply to the natural logarithm. So for example, the product uh, product law for logarithms has the equivalent product law for the natural logarithms because of course the natural logarithm is just a very special case of a logarithm just where all of these bases b have been changed to the natural number e. In order to look at the derivative of the natural logarithm ln of x what we're going to do is we're going to take the same approach that we did with exponential functions, which is we're going to approach this numerically. We don't have the algebraic or, or analytical skills required to look at this in anything but the simplest way. And that simple way is we're going to take a look at a GeoGebra applet. And in this GeoGebra applet or GeoGebra demo, I have graphed the natural logarithm. We've graphed logarithms before to different bases. So all I'm really doing is I'm graphing a logarithm to a specific base and because it's the base of e I call that ln the natural logarithm of x. In this case I'm focusing to start at an x coordinate of 1 and I'm representing the tangent line with this red dashed line and you may notice here that at an x coordinate of 1 my tangent is 1. Now that would be a really convenient relationship if my x coordinate and my tangent were always the same because don't forget that the tangent, the slope of the tangent, is the value of the first derivative. So my purpose here is to try to relate the x coordinate to the value of the first derivative. And if there's a pattern there, then I'm going to I'm going to propose that that becomes our expression. So let's go ahead and move to, and I'm going to move it up here. Let's move to our next, and I'm going to go all the way up to 2. So let's move to an x coordinate of 2. Okay, the slope of the tangent is not equal to that x-coordinate, but there still looks like there could be an interesting relationship here. B 
because now at an x-coordinate of 2, I have a slope of 1 half. So if you've got an idea of what that relationship might be, why don't you try to imagine what happens if I take my x-coordinate the other direction? What if I take it down to, for example, just 0.5 or 1 half? So if I take it down to an x-coordinate of 1 half, I end up with a slope of the tangent of 2. And hopefully with those three, you're now seeing the pattern, which is there is a reciprocal relationship here. Whatever this value of x is, the slope of the tangent is 1 over that. And I can show that with some other values. When x is equal to a quarter, I have a slope of 4. When x is equal to 3 quarters, I have a slope of 4 thirds. And that, that seems to bear out. If I have a slope of 3 halves, I get a slope, uh, sorry, if I have an x coordinate of 3 halves, I get a slope of 2 thirds. So that seems to work consistently. And so that draws us to what is in fact the correct result, but we are showing it in a very loose way. And so we end up here. If I give you the natural logarithm, it turns out that the first derivative or the derivative of the natural logarithm is 1 over x such that x is greater than 0. We still have that restriction. And the reason why it's a restriction greater than 0, it's not just saying x cannot be equal to 0, but it says it's greater than 0. That's because that restriction is actually the restriction that is on the, the logarithm of x as well, that x must be greater than 0. And you can see that from the graph here. Here is the logarithm. This graph is not defined for any values left of the y-axis. In other words, it's not defined for any negative x values. To apply the chain rule, this looks substantially more complicated. So now I take the lo natural logarithm or the ln of g of x. So the way I take the derivative of that is I get 1 over whatever was here, whatever the argument of the function was, multiplied by I have to take the derivative of whatever the argument was. That's the chain rule part. And the restriction that we mentioned before just gets modified. So basically, this is saying that the argument must always be greater than 0. In this case, the argument was just x, so it's x greater than 0. In this case, the argument was g of x, so g of x is greater than 0. Let's take a look at some examples just to solidify that idea and the mechanics involved. So a has y is equal to the ln of 5 times x. So y prime is going to be, it's going to be 1 over the argument, which is 1 over 5x, multiplied by the derivative of the argument. This is the chain rule. And so that's going to have a derivative equal to 5. And we actually end up with a fairly interesting result there, because this 5 divides into this 5. And my final answer actually ends up being 1 over x, which is the same as the derivative of ln x. It's a bit of a peculiar answer, but our algebra is correct here. Let's take a look at part b. y is equal to the ln of 7x squared. It's a little bit more complicated, but we're going to use the same idea. So it's going to be the derivative is 1 over the argument which is simply 1 over 7x squared, multiplied by the derivative of the argument, which in this case is 14x. I can see that 14 has 7 goes into that twice, 7 goes into that once. And I also have an x squared in the denominator and an x to the 1 in the numerator. So that x to the 1 is going to just turn into a 1, and this x squared is going to turn into an x to the 1. And all told, I end up with a 2 in the numerator. And in the denominator, I simply end up with x. So the answer to this one is 2 over x. That's the derivative. For c, I have y equals the ln of the square root of 5x. And you might choose to write this. I'll rewrite it here. y is equal to the ln of 5x to the power 1 half. Now this raises an interesting opportunity and I'm going to, I'll discuss that in a moment. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and blindly apply our rules here. 
And that means I'm going to take 1 over the argument, which is 1 over 5x to the 1 half, multiplied by the derivative of the argument, which is 1 half times, the derivative of the argument is 1 half, 5x now to the negative 1 half, and we have to chain our chain rule. So this is the result of our first chain rule, but we also have to take the derivative of what's inside here, which is going to work out to be 5. And so now I go ahead and do that, and I'm going to do some simplification. So in the numerator, I see I have a 5 and a 1 and a 1, so that just gives me a 5. And in the denominator, this to the negative half moves into the denominator, becomes to the positive one half, and so we end up with 5x to the one half, and 5x to the one half, which is actually 5x to the one when I add those exponents together, and I don't forget that this two is here. But now that's actually going to allow me to simplify this further because this five will divide out with this five because this is just to the power one now. And so I actually end up with an answer of 1 over 2x, which for how complicated it started looking, I actually think that's quite interesting. Now I'm going to propose an alternate solution to this one. An alternate solution, so let's, I'm just going to divide this off here a little bit, and I'm going to say, or I could have rewritten, and this is where I said there's an interesting opportunity here. If you remember your laws of logarithms, I can actually... When I have the logarithm of something raised to a power, I could rewrite that and I can bring that exponent down in front. And so that is equivalent to the ln of 5x. And now when I take the derivative of that, well, the 1 half is just a constant, so I'm going to ignore that. That's just 1 half. And now that's going to be multiplied by the derivative of ln of 5x, which is equal to 1 over 5x multiplied by the derivative of the argument because of the chain rule. This 5 divides out with this 5. And as you can see here, we actually end up with 1 over 2x. And I think you could actually make the argument that we arrived at this answer much more easily than we did the first. So don't forget the laws of logarithms. And whenever you see an opportunity, you don't have to blindly rush into it, but consider what that might get you if you were to pursue that. Now I've kind of run out of room on this page, but I left myself, I rewrote the questions here because I knew that C and D were going to take a little bit more room. So let's go ahead and take a look at D, but let's rewrite D maybe in a slightly more convenient form. So that's going to be 3 to the x as it is, but I've got the ln of x cubed. And as we saw in the previous one, actually bringing out this exponent made things a bit easier. So why don't I go ahead and bring that exponent down using the laws of logarithms. And now when I go ahead, and actually, you know what, I'm going to take one more step. And I'm going to write this as, I'm actually going to take this constant 3 and move it right out in front. And so this is 3 multiplied by 3 to the x ln x. And that's what I'm going to take my derivative of. So y prime, the 3 just stays the way it is because it's a constant in front. And now I'm going to take the derivative of 3 to the x ln x. So I'm going to use the product rule for this. The derivative of 3 to the x, if you remember from our previous lesson, the derivative of 3 to the x is just 3 to the x but we also have to multiply by the ln of the base, which is 3, times the ln of x plus. And now I leave 3 to the x alone, and I'm going to multiply that by the derivative of ln x, but the derivative of ln x is just 1 over x. And so now I end up with this expression. There are a couple of things I could do here if I were motivated to do so, depending on what it was I wanted to do. For example, there's a common factor of 3 to the x, so I might write that as 3 multiplied by 3 to the x, and then in my bracket here, I'm going to be left with the ln of 3 multiplied by the ln of x, ln 3, ln x, plus 1 over x. And there are a couple of other variations that we could look at there. 
but that's certainly sufficient for what we're looking at right now. Okay, we've taken the derivative successfully. Now, if we had not done this step, let's say that we had chosen not to rewrite this by bringing down this power, it just means that when we took the derivative of ln x, we would have had to use the chain rule. Notice we didn't use the chain rule here when we took the derivative of ln x. We just ended up with 1 over x. So that's something to keep in mind. Sometimes making these small changes is actually going to make your life quite a bit easier. Okay, now since we've talked about the natural logarithm, what about when we are looking at the generic logarithmic function. So this is one we're familiar with from advanced functions, log to the base b of x. And so under those circumstances, when we take the derivative, we end up with a result that's very similar to what we just looked at, which is it's 1 over the argument, but we have to have this extra multiplying factor, which turns out to be in the denominator as well. And we normally write it this way. So the derivative of log base b of x is 1 over x, here's the 1 over x part, and then multiplied by the ln of b. If we have a chain rule situation, it's 1 over the argument multiplied by the derivative of the argument, that's the chain rule part, but because it's log base b, we also need this extra multiplying factor, which is 1 over ln b, just like we looked at in the previous one. So that being the case, once we've once we've got that taken care of, let's go on to look at some practical examples. So once again, I've got these kind of an increasing order of complexity. So A and B are relatively straightforward. Well, A is relatively straightforward at least. So the derivative of A is going to be 1 over the argument, which is 6x times the ln of the, of the base of the logarithm, which is 3. But this is a chain rule situation, which means I also have to multiply by 6. And you can see that this 6 is going to divide out with this 6. So my final answer ends up being 1 over x ln 3. So we start with that one. And then from there, let's go on to b, which is a little bit more complicated. And here's an opportunity for us to use our laws of logarithms as well. So I'm going to write this one as, first I'm going to write this in an exponential notation. So the cube root of x to the 4 is the same as x to the power 4 thirds. And I'm also going to point out something that I really tried to drum into my students in advanced functions, which is whenever you see a logarithm where no base is specified, specified it's understood to be base 10. I'm going to rewrite this using our laws of logarithms, which means that's 4 thirds log base 10 of x. If you can keep track of this, you certainly don't need to write that log base 10. My derivative is going to be, I'm going to leave that 4 thirds alone, and really all I'm taking is the derivative of log base 10. So the derivative of log base 10 of x is 1 over x, 1 over the argument, multiplied by the natural logarithm of the base. Now with this one, we really should finish off by writing it 4 is the only thing in the numerator, and in the denominator we have 3x, multiplied by the natural logarithm of 10. Now I don't know if I've mentioned it so far, I don't know if I pointed it out yet, but when we do a question like this, you might have noticed I've done it continuously, I'm writing the variable multiplied by a constant, but our convention in the past has always been to write the constant first, and if you do that though, if you write ln of 3 and x, the problem here is we don't know if we mean that or if we mean that, which we in fact do mean this second one. So if you write it with the lawn first, I really think you need to write the extra brackets in order to be clear. So that's why I would suggest that that is a perfectly reasonable, both of these are fine, but this one doesn't require the writing of those extra brackets, so why not stop there? Moving on, and we're almost done now, let's take a look at C. And again, 
Now C is interesting because I'm going to rewrite it, but in rewriting it, I'm going to find out that there's nothing here for me to actually use my law of logarithms on because this exponent is not being applied to the to the argument of the logarithm. This exponent is being applied to the entire term. So all I can do at this point is take my derivative. So I end up with 1 half log base 10 of x. That's not really easy to see there. Let's try that again. Log base 10 of x to the negative 1 half. And now I multiply that by the chain rule. I multiply it by the derivative of log base 10 of x which is 1 over x ln natural logarithm of 10. And I've got a little bit of cleaning up to do here. So the only thing that actually persists in the numerator is the value 1. And in the denominator, I have 2. And the order that I write these in, it's really up to you. But I think I'm going to write it as 2x ln of 10 multiplied by the, now I could write this as to the positive half or I could write it as a square root depending on what it was I was looking to do with it. So that's the log of x to the power one half. And there's no really good or significant way that I can bring those together. And then finally we're going to wrap up with d and d has got quite a bit going on there so what I'll do is I think I'm just going to maybe bring this down a bit so we've got a little bit more room to work with and again let's uh, let's rewrite this to see if we can leverage what we know about logarithms so actually unfortunately I'm not going to be able to do anything more with this I'm gonna to have to go straight to the derivative and the reason is because this is the log base 2 of 4x cubed if it was 4x all cubed, then I could bring the cube down in front. But because the 4 is not cubed, it's 4 times x cubed, there's nothing more I can do with this. So actually, I'm now forced to go ahead and take the derivative in place the way it is right now, which is going to result in something fairly involved. I'm going to have to use the quotient rule. So I'm going to take the derivative of the numerator. The derivative of the numerator is equal to 1 over the argument of the logarithm, which is 4x cubed, multiplied by the natural logarithm of the base. So that is the derivative of log base 2 of 4x cubed, but I also have to multiply that by the chain rule says I have to multiply that by the derivative of the argument, which is equal to 12x squared. And then that's only the first part of the quotient rule. So I've taken the derivative of the numerator multiplied by the denominator unchanged, e to the 5x, minus the numerator unchanged, which is log base 2 of 4x cubed. If you are more comfortable, you should feel free to put a bracket around it like that. And then that thing is going to be multiplied by the derivative of the denominator, which is going to be times the derivative of e to the 5x is just e to the 5x multiplied by the derivative of the argument which is 5 so that's another chain rule situation you can see this is already quite involved and I divide that by the denominator squared which is e to the 5x all squared so now that I've done that and I've got kind of all of this stuff going on here how am I going to simplify it? So the simplification of this is usually what you want to do is look for common factors. Rather than simplifying first with these really complex terms, one of the important steps in simplification is actually to look for common factors if at all possible. So I take a look across here and one thing that jumps out to me is this e to the 5x and as it turns out that's the only common factor that I have available. And now my numerator becomes well what's left actually there's some other things I can do to simplify here for example 4 goes into 4 once and goes into 12 three times x squared x goes into x uh, sorry x squared goes into x squared leaving a 1 and then it goes into x cubed leaving an exponent of 1 and so what we end up with 
is this first term we've taken out e to the 5x and we are left with a 3 in the numerator of that first term and in the denominator of that first term it looks like I have an x ln of 2 minus I've taken an e to the 5x out of this second term and so I've got a multiplying constant of 5 times the log base 2 of 4x cubed and that's all part of my numerator divided by e to the 5x all squared but notice I have an e to the 5x essentially this is e to the 5x to the power 1 this is e to the 5x to the power 2 which means this is going to divide out and that exponent is going to become a 1 and so I end up with without Without going to too great a length, like a common denominator here, which I could do, but I'm not going to for now, my first derivative works out to be in the numerator 3 over x ln 2 minus 5 log base 2 of 4x cubed, all divided by e to the 5x. And I think that is a pretty good place for me to stop. There are some other things I could do. For example, here I have the logarithm of a product. So maybe I want to use the product rule for logarithms. Maybe I should have considered doing that before taking all of these derivatives. That actually might have helped a bit. I didn't notice that at first. I'm only seeing it now. And that is it for this lesson. So there is some work. You can see these uh, these notes refer to, or these page references are actually to the appendices of your book where you will find questions on the natural logarithm and on general logarithms and taking their derivatives.